All right, here is a concept design that I've been playing with uh, for a frame set. Um, last six months or so, I've been sort of thinking, oh, I want to get a new frame um, because my current one is a 2014 Evo um, and I feel like uh, I want to have wider wheels, wider tires, and you can't get them in that old Evo anymore. Um, so I've been thinking about what I want to get. I was looking around and there's nothing on the market at the moment that I really want to upgrade to. So I thought a good exercise would be to design my own one and see how it goes uh, and put all the little things in there that I think a frame should have and then hopefully someone will you know coincidentally make it or if it comes to it I'll just get someone to make it for me um, so this is what I've come up with so far um, this is just the beginning but I'll talk you through everything I've thought about and everything I've included on there so you can see where I'm going with this um, and if you have any you know ideas or comments or anything like that post it in there and I'll see if I can include it um, so to start with then this looks suspiciously like an Evo um, because it is what I've done is I've just copied exactly a 52 centimeter Evo which is what I ride um, and I've made modifications to that um, and I'll keep modifying it until I get you know where I want to go I've been really happy with my Evo it's a really 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 good frame uh, world-class but again it's not perfect and I feel like you know there's a few things that I could change and, and make better so here's what I did um, the Seat tube remains the same length. Um, I've modified the shape slightly. Um, I'll go into detail later. Top tube's been modified slightly. All the, in fact, all the tubes have been modified slightly. The first big thing, I increased the height of the head tube because on my 52 centimeter Evo, I feel like it's about one and a half centimeters too short for me. Um, so I've increased this by one and a half centimeters so I'll be able to slam my stem fully. Um, and the, the frame will still fit me around this area. Around here, we've got uh, much larger seats, to, uh, chain stays. Not that that was an issue with the Evo really, but I thought, you know, well, if I'm gonna design something, I might as well just go the whole hog. So I've be boosted those up. Direct mount, rear mech, and some other stuff that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, let's just have a little 3D spin around though, so you can see what's going on. Um, here you can see the sort of standard Evo rear end. Um, but I've boosted this up a little bit, squared it off. Here's the first big thing, uh, direct mount brakes, all right? Direct mount brakes with a perhaps poorly positioned brake bridge at the moment. Um, I've kept the external classic seat post clamp because I don't think there's a better way to do that. Loads of people have had problems with internal ones dropping down into frames and so on, like cycle speed had, uh, if you're watching this, hello mate. So I've just gone standard with that. Uh, if I dream up something new and excellent, I'll change it, but for the time being. Um, bottom bracket, PF30, same as the uh, existing EVA. A lot of people have problems with this. I've had no problems with it, because if you install it properly, it's fine. I'm fine. Through axle dropouts, all right? 135 mil, even though this is a uh, direct mount and not disc. So obviously we'll have to you know, design a new hub set as well. Um, but yeah, I think, that's, I think that should be the standard. No matter, even if it's disc or not, I think that's what all bikes should be. Uh, front end, this, uh, like I say, this 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 head tube has been increased in height by about one and a half centimeters, fifteen mil. Um, the top tube, I've slightly squared it off. Um, again, the down tube has been squared off slightly, so it's not as just as purely round as the old Evo is. Forks, much wider stance um, with direct mount brakes. Uh, this allows for larger tyres and, of course, direct mount brakes as well. Through axle on the front as well, uh, 110 mil. Again, you'll need to, we'll, we, I will need to make a, a new hub to match this. Um, but I thought, you know, let's get things to be all the same between disc and non-disc bikes. So that's basically it so far. Um, let's look at it in a variety of different colours. There you go. This is a sort of chrome effect. So you can see, um, I've slightly modified the seat uh, stays to be a little bit thicker in the top end with the, and a little bit thinner down the bottom. Um, I find that the Evo seat stays are sort of worryingly thin all the way down. And I've always thought like if I, you know, just knocked it against something, I could really knacker them, which would just ruin your frame. So I've boosted these up slightly. Um, not sure that'll do to the ride, but I'll have to think about that later. This is, this is just a concept, like I say. Um, this bit here, the uh, direct mount plate, is just 
a sort of mock-up at the moment. It's just a holding place. I'll have to model that properly later. Um, you can see how much I've increased the size of these chain stays. I'm not sure even if they'll uh, fit or they'll work or whatever. I mean, that's quite a large amount of space there. Um, think about that later, but that's, again, just a concept. Uh, let's have a look at the front end then. Uh, get these forks out. There we go. Um, at the moment, I'm pretty happy with the way that Cannondale do their uh, headset bearings. They just drop into the frame and sit directly on the frame. There's no sort of, you know, locking mechanism or anything that screws on the top. They just sit on there and then you put the compression unit on and then it's done. Really easy. So I've just sort of lifted that directly from the Evo. Again, the bottom. There you go. So look at that. That's how it's modelled. You can see all the faces there. And then sub sub division surface, all my blender crew know what I'm talking about. Uh, the front end, I've kind of, it's this, it's very similar to the Evo, but the Evo kind of, the, it sort of bulges out here, right against the head tube. Well, what I've done is I've kept that smooth and I've made the bulge a little bit later. I'm not sure what that'll do to aerodynamics. In fact, I'm not sure what any of this will do to aerodynamics. But luckily, Autodesk, the people who make AutoCAD, have got their own... Uh, got their own uh, aerodynamic software that you can shove any 3D model into and it'll it'll model the effects of, of wind on it. So I'm going to do that and see how it works and then, you know, tweak it to be as aerodynamic as possible, like a real geek. Uh, yeah, but that's getting there, really. Um, this took a while to model, just the basics. From here, it's just a case of tweaking it, really, and adding little features. These forks, they're quite round on the outer face. I'm not sure if I like that. Um, I'm not sure if that's any good as well. So I have to research what the latest thinking is on that and also check it in the aerodynamic software um, and then remodel it as as required. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure how much material I'll need here for this through axle. And again, how this exactly how this through axle works. This is just a quick, quick model. <laughs> Such a quick model that it's not even round. Uh, let's check it in a few different colors. Right, there you go. Oh yeah, I've, I've flattened the uh, flattened the down tube a little bit as well to better sort of blend into this uh, this bottom bracket area. The current Evo sort of feels because it probably is a little bit sort of strapped on down here to get a bit of a rough edge. Not really into that. Uh, I'm not sure how cable routing will work. I haven't thought about it yet. And again, there's nowhere to stick your front mech. Um, but what I would like to do, if it's at all possible, is uh, keep this entire bottom bracket area sealed, so you know there's no there's no uh, access to any of the tubes. So just seal the whole thing off. This will hopefully prolong the life of the bottom bracket uh, because at the moment you know a lot of sweat and stuff goes down here, this tube, the seat tube, and then falls on the uh, falls on the bottom bracket device if i could some if i could seal that off and then still have access to all the uh, all the cabling and so on uh, that'd be good or you know just get e-tap well, i don't really want e-tap um yeah but that's it so far so what we've got summary then direct mount front and rear brakes 135 mil rear 110 mil front direct mount front uh, rear mech through axle on the front and rear um pf30 bottom bracket squared off tubing oh yeah this uh this seat tube has got a bit of a cam tail effect on it. Not sure how that'll work, but that was just an idea of mine. What I might do is I might extend this out the back a bit and make it, you know, like a like a sort of more of an aero aero frame. Um, but I don't want to add too much weight to it, and I'm not I'm not entirely in love with pure aero frames. I like the sort of bit of a lightweight frame. So yeah, that's it so far. Um, I will do a bit more work and then post again with my updates, and then. Uh, let some uh, guys in China steal this from me and then make it, all right?